Good morning to the Commonwealth. This is Young Honey with Raw Dog Radio, bringing you the greatest old-time radio station since the bombs fell. If you're just tuning in, welcome. We're going to be hitting you with an arrangement of ragtime, unabridged stories, and other old-world medias just for you to fall asleep to or relax to. I'd like to send a specific thank you to publicdomainreview.org and archive.org for organizing and compiling all of this media. If you would like to listen to the standalone media, we have included a link in the description. Our last series followed the Frontier Man, but we're going to switch gears to the Adventures of the Falcon. Hailing from the 1940s, the hard-boiled spy drama is now around 80 years old. If you can provide proof of your existence when it released as a syndicated radio series, I will personally come visit and cook you a continental breakfast. Without further ado, let's get to listening. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Myrna. I'm glad you called. Oh, you'll have to count me out tonight, Angel. I've got a date with a magician. Mm-hmm. This boy's going to show me how to make four million in gold out of 30 cents worth of lead. This is Ed Hurley, friends, inviting you on behalf of the Kraft Foods Company to listen to The Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. You met the Falcon first in his best-selling novels, and you saw him in his thrilling motion picture series. Now, join him on the air when the Falcon solves... The Case of the Witty Widow. Before we join the Falcon in his latest adventure, I'd like to tell you folks about Kraft's Golden Velveeta. Velveeta is such good eating. Just taste that grand, rich, yet mild cheddar cheese flavor. And Velveeta is so good for you. It's rich in important food values from milk. And it's digestible. Velveeta is as digestible as milk itself. For swell-tasting snacks, for good, hearty sandwiches, for thrifty, easy hot dishes, it's smart to keep stocked with Velveeta. Get it tomorrow in the handy half-pound package or in the economical two-pound loaf. The pasteurized processed cheese food of top quality, Velveeta is made only by Kraft. Now, the case of the witty widow. early afternoon in New York, and in room 619 of the Remsen building, a pudgy little man named Edward Paris washes his hands for the tenth time in as many minutes, which may go to show that Mr. Paris doesn't approve of the type of people he deals with. And if you watch, you may see why. Who is it? Me, Mr. Paris. Oh, just a second, Mickey. Come in. Right. What you locking it for? Uh, my doctor warned me to stay out of drafts. Oh, what good is locking? It's a new school of thought. Uh, sit down. Mickey, have you been behaving yourself? Uh, you know me. Yes, that's why I asked. Well, I haven't touched a drop in months. You know what I mean? Stick out your hands. See? Steady as a rock. When was the last time they ran you in? November. That's when I took the cure. You don't have to worry, Mr. Paris. I realize I can't handle this stuff, so I just don't take that first drink. You know what I mean? I hope so, Mickey. How would you like to make yourself $500? Would I? Take a look at this picture. <whistles> well, I'm glad to see you're a lover of beauty. You recognize her? Well, her face is kind of familiar. That's Mrs. Laura Davis. Laura Davis. Her first husband was John Nichols. Oh, sure. He owned half the real estate in New York, and when he croaked, he left her a bundle. That's right. Now, she's married now to a man named Austin Davis. They live at the Marlboro. Have you got that? I got it. You're to go up and see her tonight and give her this envelope. What's in here? Well, that's none of your business. Just see that Mrs. Davis gets it and nobody else. She'll give you $25,000. What? Uh, don't get any ideas, Mickey. Just bring the money here. (laughs) 
Yes? Hello, Mrs. Davis. Who are you? Mickey Slater. I don't think I know anyone by that name. Think what you've been missing. Hmm. I got something for you. Know what I mean? Oh, yes. Um, come in. Thanks. Hey. It's quite a layout. I'd ask you to sit down, but I don't think you'll be staying long. Oh, I'm in no hurry, Mrs. Davis. Unfortunately, I am. May I have the envelope? Sure. Well? Ain't you forgetting some? What do you mean? I was supposed to pick up something from you, sort of tit for tat, you know what I mean? Get away from that desk. I just wanted to get the briefcase. Money in there? Would you like to count it? No, I'll take your word for it. Laura. The name is Mrs. Davis. Well, I'm a pretty familiar type guy, you know what I mean? I wouldn't advise you to get too familiar. May I have your envelope now? You bet your life. Fair exchange is no robbery, I always say. Well, as long as you've got it set, I don't see any reason to detain you. I'm sorry you feel that way, Laura. And we can't help the way we feel, can we? Guess not. It's been delightful talking to you, Mickey, but I wouldn't care to play this scene over again. Next time, someone might blow up in their lines. Know what I mean? <laughs> It is. Well, have a job, pal. Oh, thank you. You know, Mickey, I'm very disappointed in you. That cure apparently wasn't as permanent as you thought. You won't believe it, Mr. Paz. I was on my way to your office. You had it right the first time. Huh? I won't believe it. Where's the money? The money? Oh, yeah. I got it right here in the briefcase. Excuse me. Not at all. You didn't think I'd let you down. <laughs> I didn't know what to think. Sorry, Mickey Slater don't ever let a pal down. Oh, thank you, Mickey. Sure. How about old Snort? Um, no, no thanks. I guess I gotta drink alone. Very dangerous habit you get into, Mr. Paz. I mean? I imagine you were surprised when you opened that envelope. It certainly was. Who'd have thought? Go on, Mickey. What were you going to say? I opened what envelope? The one I gave you for Laura Davis? You got rocks in your head. That's the liquor talking. Look, I said I didn't open no envelope. You don't believe me, you know what you can do. No, I don't, Mickey, but I'll give it some thought. I'm sure you'll excuse me if I go home now and meditate. <laughs> Of course, dear. Hello? Uh, let me talk to Laura Davis. She's busy at the moment. Well, she can't be that busy. Tell her that it's Mickey Slater. Just a moment. It's for you, Laura. A Mickey Slater. Slater? Oh, yes, that's the new tailor I was telling you about. Sounds drunk. Well, it doesn't seem to affect his work. I'll talk to him. Hello? Hiya, Mrs. Davis. But you're kind of surprised to hear from me so soon. I can't honestly say I am. Well, uh, I hate to put the bite on you, sweetie, but you see, I picked up that briefcase for somebody else. All I got was five bills for my end. Well, that's too bad. Uh, yeah, I knew you'd feel that way. And since tomorrow's my birthday, I was wondering whether you'd like to make me a little present. <laughs> what did you have in mind? A briefcase. Just like the one I got from you tonight. I say just like the one. You know what I mean? I know what you mean. But I wouldn't count on it. Uh, you wouldn't disappoint me on my birthday, would you? I got a room at the Pembroke, and I'll be receiving all day tomorrow. If that's all you've got to say, Teddy... That's Katie. all I got to say. Be seeing you, honey. What's, what's the trouble, darling? What? Something bothering you? Uh, nothing I can't handle, Austin. Uh, would you get my coat, darling? I have to run out for a little while. Me for you, and you for me, too. Who's 
who's there? I say, who's there? I think he's smart, huh? I'll show you. I get up pretty early in the morning to put one over on Mickey Slater. All right, what did you... See, I did... Trouble, lady? Taxi. Maybe I can give you a lift. My car's right here. Look, if you don't get out of here... You call the cops. Yes. Well, just goes to prove what a small world this is. What are you talking about? I'm Sergeant Corbett, New York Homicide. So? So I wonder if I could impose upon you to take a little ride with me down to headquarters. You... Start her up, Kelly. Are you mad? Ever hear of a man named Mickey Slater? No. Well, he was foully done in some three hours and four bullets ago. No. Yes. Listen, Sergeant. I'd love to, but I hate loitering on street corners. Let's wait till we get downtown, huh? Home, James. Hello. Is your radio on, sir? What? What program are you listening to? Who is this? Ah, you know, Mike. You're just trying to pad your part. Oh, listen, Sergeant. Do you realize it's four o'clock in the morning? You're slow. It's five after. What do you want? Me? Not a thing. But we're holding a little lady who's in dire need of your services. Her name is Laura Davis. Never heard of her. She's John Nichols' widow. The real estate king? Yeah, she'll pay plenty. What's she alleged to have done? (laughs) <laughs> That's what I love about you, Mike. You're so proper. What she alleged to have done, there's nothing alleged about it. She killed a boy named Mickey Slater. I don't believe it. You don't know the woman, you don't know the victim, but you don't believe it. What does it take to convince you, anyhow? A lot more than you can offer, Sergeant. Tell Mrs. Davis I'm on my way. This is Ed Hurley again, friends. Well, it looks like Mike won't be convinced by Sergeant Corbett. No, he wants to find out for himself. And that's a good idea. For example, if you'd like to find out for yourself how delicious and wonderfully helpful a good cheese sauce can be, you just try this. Melt Velveeta, Kraft's famous pasteurized processed cheese food, for the smoothest golden sauce you ever saw. One that's perfect over vegetables, or to combine with leftovers for a hearty main dish. It's a wonderfully easy sauce to make. You just melt a half pound of Velveeta in the top of your double boiler. You don't have to cut it into little pieces, because Velveeta melts so easily, so smoothly. Then stir in a quarter cup of milk. Season to suit your taste, and you'll have the best-tasting cheese sauce you ever put a fork into. Velveeta has such a fine, rich, yet mild cheddar cheese flavor. And it's mighty nourishing, too because Velveeta is rich in important food values from milk, so even the smallest youngsters can enjoy it often. Find out for yourself what a wonderfully handy helper Velveeta can be, whether you melt it for this grand cheese sauce or slice it thick for hearty sandwiches. Get a two-pound loaf of Velveeta tomorrow. It's America's favorite pasteurized processed cheese food, the one and only Velveeta. Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. Twenty minutes have passed since Sergeant Corbett phoned Mike to give him the business. And now, down at police headquarters, we find Sergeant Corbett making like Emily Post. Mrs. Davis, may I present Mike Waring, otherwise known as the Falcon, the nemesis of the underworld. You mean that he... Ain't it disgusting? Uh, Just ignore him, Mrs. Davis. His mother was frightened by Joe Miller. Yes, I can believe it. How soon can you get me out of here? Well, there are certain minor technicalities we have to observe. You see, the police believe you killed Mickey Slater. That's ridiculous. Yes, well, we both know that, but uh, go fight City Hall. How well did you know him, anyway? I didn't know him at all. Then what were you doing at his hotel? He said I was there. The desk clerk, for one. All right, I lied. Nice of you to admit it. I can hardly do anything else, Sergeant. I was at the Pembroke. But? When I got there, Mickey was dead. What did you want with him, anyway? I'd rather not go into that. Well, you don't have any choice, Laura. Well, uh, couldn't we... 
Oh, yes, yes, we certainly could. Uh, Sergeant, you think you could arrange for us to have a little privacy? A little. Oh, will you stop being such a character? Okay, you don't have to push. If you want anything, folks, just ring. We pride ourselves on our service. All right, Mrs. Davis, now let's have it. Where do you want me to start? Right from the top of the page. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Paula. I'm glad you called. Oh, you'll have to count me out tonight, Angel. I'm all jammed up. Some girl just learned that things have been kind of slow for me lately, and she's planning to give me the business. This is Ed Hurley, he friends, inviting you on behalf of the Kraft Foods Company to listen to The Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. You met the Falcon first in his best-selling novels, then you saw him in his thrilling motion picture series. Now, join him on the air when the Falcon solves... The Case of the Talented Texan. Before the Falcon solves today's case, I have a question for you. Have you tried Velveeta lately? Isn't that the finest cheese food you ever put in your mouth? That rich yet mild cheddar cheese flavor is good. Really good eating. You see, Velveeta is made by Kraft, and that's something pretty important to remember, because you and I know what the Kraft name means on cheese and cheese foods. It means the very finest you can buy. So remember this. There's no other cheese food like Kraft's pasteurized processed cheese food, Velveeta, because Kraft, and only Kraft, makes Velveeta. Now, the case of the talented Texan. It's late afternoon in New York, and in a small furnished apartment on Manhattan's east side, a gentleman named Reed Stevens prepares for business while his wife watches interestedly as he opens up shop. There's a box of shells in the bottom drawer, Ken. So? So would you mind getting it for me? You going to work? What's it look like? Ask a silly question to get a silly answer. What'd you say? Oh, nothing. Haven't you found it yet? Yes. You must like working for Conway. Here. What makes you say that? I've been at it for seven months. That's the longest I ever remember you working for anyone. I didn't have any better offers. What about Myers? Didn't he offer you 50 bucks a week more? That's right, he did. Why didn't you take it? Maybe I didn't like the hours. Or maybe... It's because Mr. Myers is a bachelor. What's that supposed to mean? Don't you think I know the big attraction at Conway's? Suppose you tell me. Mrs. Conway. How's that again? Don't try to kid me, Reed. I recognize the signs. I've seen them often enough. You're in love with her. You're out of your mind. Then why does your face light up every time she calls you? Does it? Yes. And she feels the same way about you. You think I'm blind? No. If anyone's blind, it's been me. Well, I'd better stop. You're my guy, and nobody's going to take you away. Mm-hmm. Well, this has all been very charming, but if you'll excuse me... Where do you think you're going? To work, do you mind? Now, Reed, listen to me. You know, if I didn't love you... You're going to get out of my way? No, I am not. We're going to have this out right here and now. I told you something, Kate. Oh. Oh. I have Conway calls. Tell him I'm picking up his missus first, then I'll pick him up at the club. Have you got that? Yeah, I got it. I got it the first time. I don't want to heckle, Reed, but do you know where you're going? That's a very good question, Mrs. Conway. Oh, do you? You passed the club 20 minutes ago. If you intend to pick up Fred there, you're doing it the hard way. What are we stopping here for? I'd like to talk to you, Lois. Lois? You know, my wife uh, said something very strange today. About us? Mm-hmm. Yeah, she uh, thought there was something playing. What made her think that? Feminine intuition. Don't ever sell it short. And she was right? Well, no, as it happened, she was wrong, but that's your fault. I went for you the first day I saw you at the club. Seven months ago? Seven months ago. We wasted a lot of time, Reed. You're right, baby. We got a lot of time to make up for. Just a second. Yes? 
Yes? You're Kay Stevens, aren't you? That's right. My name is Fred Conway. I know. I'm flattered. May I come in? Well, Reed isn't home. That's why I picked this time to call. Oh. Won't you sit down? I believe I will. Would you like a... Not a thing, thank you. I have everything I want. Or perhaps I should amend that statement. I had everything I wanted. I don't follow you, Mr. Conway. Please call me Fred. Your husband does. Well, Reed doesn't like me to take liberties. Obviously, what's sauce for the goose isn't sauce for the gander. I don't understand you. Of course you do, Kay. You're a smart woman. I'm sure it won't come as any shock to you that Reed has been seeing my wife for five weeks now. Well? Well, what do you propose to do about it? Nothing. Nothing? This may be a new experience for you, Mr. Conway. Fred. But it is an old story in this department. Oh, have there been others? Dozens. And Reed always comes back to me. Did it ever occur to you that one day he may not... What do you mean? Someday he might meet the one woman who can keep him interested. Who knows? It could be Lois. Jackie. Oh, hi, Mr. Conway. I didn't see you come in. How are we doing? Not much action tonight. Any calls? Only Claiborne and Pepper. They want to lay off eight grand on Mama's boy at Bowie. Take it. Anything else? Oh, yeah. Your missus is in the office. She alone? Uh Uh-huh. Fine. Incidentally, tell Reed Stevens he can have the night off. I won't need him anymore. Right. Hello, darling. I've been waiting for you, Fred. I know. Jackie just told me. What is it this time? A new coat? No. This time you're wrong. Well, you just name it, Lois. You know there's nothing I'd refuse you. Suppose I told you I wanted... A divorce? How did you know? It was fairly obvious. But I think you're making a mistake. Reed doesn't want to marry you. Doesn't he? No. I'll bet you've never even discussed it with him. Have you? Well, I figured his wife was a much better choice than she was. She tells me Reed goes through these things periodically. You're lying. I wish I were, darling. I know what a blow this must be to your vanity. But I imagine if you called Mrs. Stevens, she'd be happy to give you names and addresses. Now, listen, Fred. I'm sorry, dear, but I've got a million things to do, and so have you. You'll have to pack your clothes and then... Oh, there's no real hurry. Take all the time in the world. If you're out of the house by 11 tonight, that'll be fine. Hello, I guess you must have been expecting someone else. What do you want? You read, Stephen? That's right. I want you. Now, look, mister. Just call me Tex. What's the idea of the cannon? Well, it's generally the idea. You nuts? If somebody don't like you, Reed, you must have gone out of your way to... Just keep your hands right where they are. Hey, it's a nifty-looking shoulder holster you got there. Mind if I see it? Oh, that's what I call a beauty. But it sets you back. Now, listen, Tex. Sure wish I could afford one like it. Yeah, don't think much of your shooting iron. Too clumsy. <laughs> Look at all the effort you got to use to pull the trigger. <laughs> I guess I was wrong. It don't seem to take any effort at all. Just a second. Yes? I'm looking for Michael Waring. Come in. Well, I'm afraid there must be some mistake. Are, Are you Mr. Waring? That's right. I mean, are you a private detective? I got a license that says so. Well, where's your office? I don't have one. I work right out of here. Disappointed? Well, I... And I don't have a beautiful blonde secretary or a desk full of empty liquor bottles either. Now, if you'd like to get someone else... Uh... I'm sorry, it's just... <laughs> no, it's my fault, Miss... Uh... Stevens. K. Stevens. Mm. Only it's Mrs. Well, come on in. Thank you. Now, sit down, won't you? I'd rather not, if you don't mind. All right, suit yourself. Cigarette? No, thanks. Okay, let's get down to cases. I want a divorce. What do you expect me to do about it? Well, I'll need evidence. 
So you want me to do a little keyhole peeking? Huh? Yes. His name is Reed Stevens. You mean his name was Reed Stevens? What? That's well, a funny thing, Sergeant, but I don't remember you knocking. Well, come to think of it, I don't remember that either. What do you mean my husband's name was Reed Stevens? Well, don't you always use the past tense in connection with a deceased? What are you trying to say? He's been murdered, Mrs. Stevens. No! Yes, nobody knows that better than you. Where is he? Where is he? I've got to see him. You will. You care to join us, Mike? Is it a pinch? It is indeed. I'm so glad your apartment is only eight minutes from headquarters. Whenever we have a homicide, I can always stop here first. And very rarely have I been disappointed. All right, folks, let's go. This is Ed Hurley here again, friends. Well, while Sergeant Corbett and Mike go to headquarters with Mrs. Stevens, I'd like to tell you about an idea that will save you money next time you go to your food store. Just get a loaf of Velveeta, Kraft smooth-melting, pasteurized processed cheese food. You can melt Velveeta for a golden smooth cheese sauce that'll do wonders for leftover bits of meat or seafood or vegetables. And it's so easy to make. Just melt a half pound of Velveeta in the top of your double boiler. You needn't cut that half-pound piece of Velveeta up at all because it melts so easily and smoothly without any lumps. Then simply stir in a quarter cup of milk, season, and there you have a fine-tasting cheese sauce with a grand, rich, yet mild cheddar cheese flavor. And this delicious sauce adds fine nourishment to those leftovers, too, because Velveeta is so rich in important food values from milk. It's digestible as milk itself, so even the smallest youngsters can enjoy it. Whether you melt golden Velveeta for a wonderful cheese sauce or slice it thick for hearty, hot or cold sandwiches or snacks, make Velveeta your handy helper mother. Get a two-pound loaf tomorrow and enjoy America's favorite pasteurized processed cheese food, the one and only Velveeta, made by Kraft. Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. Only 15 minutes have passed since Kay Stevens was arrested for the murder of her husband. And now at headquarters, while Mrs. Stevens is being booked, Sergeant Corbett makes our hero a sporting proposition. Look, Mike, I've got an idea. Why don't you just walk out of here and I'll make believe like I never even saw you with Mrs. Stevens? Oh, no, that's big of you. Okay, I was just trying to help. She killed her husband just as sure as you're standing there. I did not. Then why were you consulting Waring? I had my reasons. If you weren't so stupid, you'd see that I couldn't have killed Reed. Why not? Because I was in love with him. Why did you want a divorce? Because I was fed up with him. That makes a lot of sense. Oh, sure it does. You can be crazy about somebody, and yet they can do things to you that drive you out of your mind. Don't make me laugh. Oh, it happens every day in the week. The old story of not being able to live with someone or live without him. He managed it nicely. I tell you, I didn't kill him, Sergeant. You know he was chasing around. He did it before? But this time he wasn't coming back. He always came back. If you were so sure of that, why did you go to Waring to get your evidence for a divorce? Oh, I don't know. I'm all mixed up. You weren't so mixed up that you couldn't hire a professional gunman? That is not true. All right, all right. Lay off a of Corbett. What's this about a professional gunman? We got a description of the lad who actually pulled the trigger. Who is he? We're not sure yet, but according to the building superintendent, he was a tall, red-headed boy who spoke with a western accent. You think Mrs. Stevens hired him? Yes. You're crazy. I would never do anything to hurt Reed. All right, that's enough, Kay. Who was the other woman this time? I have no idea. Well, if she's bashful, I'll tell you. It was Lois Conway. Lois Conway? Freddie's wife. You know her? Not personally. Oh, really? Maybe I'm missing something. Take it easy, Kay. I'll keep in touch. Call for Mrs. Lois Conway. Call for Mrs. Lois Conway. Right here, boy. Hello, Mrs. Conway. Hello, Bill Hop. Well, how could you tell? I thought I did a real professional job. Who are you? Mike Waring. The one they call the Falcon? <laughs> no, I'm sure it pays to advertise. What do you want with me? Well, it's a long, dull story. Uh, why don't we step into the bar and I'll tell you about it. No, thank you. I think you'll change your mind. Reed Stevens is dead. What? Mm hmm. Murdered early tonight. Maybe. Maybe I could stand a drink after all. The bar's right over there. H how did it happen? A professional gunman paid him a visit in a little hideaway Reed rented on East 58th Street. They catch the man? No. And they don't know who hired him, hmm? Well, the police are inclined to believe it was my client. Your client? Mrs. Stevens. 
They're crazy. Reed was happily married. He told you that himself? Several times. Hey, right through this door. Good day, Monsieur Lucky Table. Uh, no, Monsieur, we'll sit right at the bar, but we would like a couple of whiskey sours. Very good, sir. You seem to know my preferences. Oh, you'd be surprised what I know about you, Lois. Lois? Well, I figured it's permissible. After all, I do know you real well. I even knew where to find you. How'd you manage that? Well, I went to your room first and uh, told the maid I had a COD parcel for you. Imagine my surprise when she said you were staying at the Creighton. Uh, indirectly, that told me a lot more. I don't see how. Well, that's because you're no detective. You see, when she refused the COD, it could only mean one thing. What? That your husband must have known about you and Reed and tossed you out on your lovely ear. How dare you! No. Oh. Nice right cross you've got. I never want to see you again. Oh, don't count on it, Lois. I was brought up right. I'll be back if only to turn the other cheek. Take care of yourself, Angel. Hello, Conway. Waring. I dropped by earlier tonight. So the maid told me. Come in. Thanks. Take off your coat. No, I don't think I'll be staying long. You hear about Reed Stevens? Yes, too bad, wasn't it? Yes, especially for his wife. I'm working for him. Don't tell me they think she killed him. They certainly do. Well, that's absurd. From what I know, they're a very devoted couple. Mm -hmm. well, would you have any idea who uh, done it? According to the papers, it was a gunman for hire. Yes, but the question is, who picked up his tab? I can't believe it was Mrs. Stevens. No, neither can I. Uh, did he have any enemies? Present company accepted. Just what is that supposed to mean? Well, after all, he wasn't one of your favorite people. Oh, maybe not a real favorite, but I liked him. Even after he walked off with your wife? You're mistaken, Mike. Nobody ever took anything away from me. Mm -hmm. Well, when Reed did, he certainly didn't get to keep it for long. Jackie. Yes? This is Mr. Waring. Well, glad to know you. Hey, don't be too glad. I find him highly objectionable. I see. All right, never mind, Jackie. I can take a hint. Lucky thing I didn't remove my coat, eh, Conway? I knew I wasn't going to get to stay long. Hey, you want me to... Never mind, Jackie. I'll take it. Hello. That you, Freddy? Yes, Lois. I called several times before. So Jackie told me. Will it be all right if I come home and talk to you? No, it won't. Just for five minutes? It's out of the question, darling. Look, Freddy, I, I don't blame you for feeling the way you do. I realize how you must hate me. Nonsense. I'm extremely fond of you, Lois. Well, then could no. we... No. No, I'm afraid we couldn't. It won't ever happen again. Certainly not with Reed Stevens, anyway. You've got to give me another chance. I'll make it up to you. I swear I will. You just don't seem to understand, Lois. I'm not interested. Who do you think you're talking to, anyway? I'd like to tell you, but I think the telephone company might be shocked. Listen, Mr. High and Mighty, I know plenty about you. How would you like it if I went to Mike Waring? I wouldn't bother him. He's a very busy man. I think he'll clear time to hear what I've got to say. Uh, don't do it, Lois. You, you've made one mistake already. I hate to see you make another. Are you threatening me? Would I do that to my own wife? But then you won't be my wife much longer, will you? Goodbye, dear. It's been grand hearing from you. Come in. I'm looking for Mike Waring. Well, you know what the good book says, seek and you shall find. Yeah, I'm sure glad to make your acquaintance, Mr. Waring. I heard a lot about the Falcon. Well, you can't believe everything you hear. I'll say that's a good one. What's on your mind, Mr... Uh... Just call me Tex. Everybody does. All right, Tex it is. Sit down. Thanks. Now make yourself comfortable. I'll be back. Oh, hmm? where do you think you're going? Down the hall. Come back here. Well, I just remembered... I said come back here. Is that thing loaded? You can have six guests. Uh, no, thanks. I'm awfully bad at games. Well, I would have thought you'd be a thousand miles from New York by this time. Why? Well, it's your practice to hang around after you do a job. You're obviously confusing me with someone else. I doubt it. You're the boy who gunned Reed Stevens. Uh, how in the world did you ever figure that out? I'm psychic. Who are you working for, Tex? I'm glad you mentioned that, Mr. Waring, because that's why I'm here. 
Now, you can see what a trusting soul I am. Oh, yes, with half an eye. Well, what would you say if I told you that someone took advantage of my good nature? No. They did for fact. You see, I undertook this assignment on a sort of a, a contingent basis. So? If I deliver, I get paid. And you know what happened? No, tell me. Well, after I took care of Mr. Stevens, my party disappeared. Your party? The person who hired me. Now, I consider that downright dishonest. Well, I see your point. Now, if you was my position, what would you do? Get even. That's just what I thought. Of course, that ain't gonna put any money in my pocket, so, uh... I was wondering if you might be willing to recompense me. Well, I don't know. What have you got to sell? A little piece of evidence that'll give you the name of the person who hired me. Where is it? In this handkerchief. May I? Oh, no, I'm afraid you'll just have to take my word for it. Well, don't you trust me? Oh, of course I do. Would I be here if I didn't? Well, you can't expect me to buy a blind item. Now, uh, suppose I... No, you don't get back... And that wasn't nice, Mr. Waring. I trusted you. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry, Tex. Guess I lost my head. Yeah, you did indeed. No. Oh. Good morning, Mr. Waring. What? You must have made quite a night of it. No, where's my head? Must be around somewhere. Oh. Don't try to get up. No, I don't think I can make it. What happened? Well, I had a visitor. Our friend from Texas. How did you know? The elevator boy gave us a description. It tallied with the other. That was Tex, all right. What did he want with you? He said he had some evidence to sell. Seems he never got paid for gunning Reed. That's modern civilization for you. You can't trust a soul these days. Well, that was his feeling, too. What was this evidence he had? I don't know. He had it wrapped in a handkerchief. In this handkerchief? Where'd you find that? In the hall. Look what was wadded up inside. Empty cartridge shell. Yeah, from one of the babies that killed Stevens. What? You heard me. Well, that won't do any good. Boy, can you call him? There was a thumbprint on this shell. Whose? Whose do you think? Mr. Stevens, that's whose? I don't believe it. Well, maybe you don't, but I'll bet a jury does. And strangely enough, Mike, that's all I care about. <laughs> This is Ed Hurley here again, friends. Well, Mike seems a bit skeptical, doesn't he? He wants proof. And if you want to prove to yourself how delicious Velveeta is, you try this. Fix toasted sandwiches of Velveeta, Kraft's delicious pasteurized processed cheese food, and serve them with relishes and your favorite beverage. You can be sure those sandwiches will taste good because Velveeta has such a fine, rich, yet mild cheddar cheese flavor. And they'll be nourishing, too. Because Velveeta is rich in important food values from milk. So make Velveeta your handy helper, Mother, for company snacks and sandwiches and for the many ways you'll fix it for the family. Get Velveeta in the handy half-pound package or the economical two-pound loaf. Just be sure you get genuine Velveeta. <laughs> Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. An hour has passed since Sergeant Corbett informed Mike Waring that Kay Stevens' fingerprints were found on the shell that killed her husband. Now, as we find the good sergeant, the Falcon, they're on their way to headquarters. Mike still refuses to accept the evidence. Listen, Sergeant, there must be some mistake about that shell. What kind of a mistake? You're certain that's Kay Stevens' fingerprint on it? Absolutely. Well, there must be a logical expert. Wait a minute. Oh, no. What's the matter? I know what's coming. You see it all now. You know who was responsible for Reed's murder. Well, I do. Can you pick up Fred and Lois Conway? What for? All right, just humor me, will you? Okay, Mike, if you're going to act like a no reason why you shouldn't have an audience, I'll be there. Are you responsible for this, Lois? You think I'd be here if I were? Who's in charge here, anyway? Me. Hey, you know what's going to happen to you, Sergeant? Ah, don't think it out of me, Conway. This is all my doing. Oh, it was? What's the idea, Sam? 
idea is that we're trying to determine who was behind Reed Stevens' murder. Well, why isn't Mrs. Stevens here? Well, that's right, she should be. He is. You come in, Mrs. Stevens. Is Mike here? He's here. Okay. I think you know Mr. and Mrs. Conway? We've met. Good, then we can begin. Hey, they found your fingerprints on one of the shells that killed your husband. That's impossible. Nevertheless, it's true. How do you explain it? I can't. Did Reed pack a gun? Yes. How did he wear it? In a shoulder holster. Was he ever without it? Never. Funny we didn't find one on his body. Oh, it's not so funny. Why couldn't that torpedo have removed it? That still doesn't explain how her fingerprints got on the shell. Suppose Reed was killed with his own gun. So what? So at one time or another, Kay might have handled it, along with the bullets. I did. I remember one night in particular, about five weeks ago. And how would you remember that? Because that was the night that I accused Reed of being in love with your wife. Are you nasty uh-uh. little... Temper, temper. Now, there you have it, Sergeant. There I have what? Your case. Isn't it clear now who's the guilty critter? No. All right, just ask yourself, who was the first to know about the romance between Reed and Mrs. Conway? Listen, Waring. Conway? No, no, of course not, Sergeant. Logically, it would be Mrs. Conway. What are you talking about? I'm sorry, Lois, but I had to help them out. Otherwise, we would have been up all night. And after the evening I spent with your friend Tex, I just couldn't take it. Well, that's all there was to it, Kay. Once I realized Tex was working for Lois, it all added up. Incidentally, did the police pick him up yet? Yeah, 20 minutes ago. His real name is Leo Haynes. Where'd they find him? On the west side, naturally. I still don't see Lois's motive. Oh, that's simple. She learned her husband told her the truth. She was just another girl to read. And look what she gave up for him. What? Well, Conway threw her out, didn't he? Now, that's the part I don't understand. You think that Conway would have gone after Reed? Mm-mm. Wasn't worth it to him. Fred's the kind of man who doesn't like trouble. He had his revenge when he packed Lois in. And as far as he was concerned, that took care of everything. So poor Lois winds up in the middle with nobody wanting her. Except the police. How did you peg her, anyway? The police gave me the answer. You remember where they found Reed's body? Yes, in a little hideaway he had on East 58th Street. Mm-hmm. And what made it a hideaway? <laughs> the fact that nobody knew about it. Exactly. Nobody knew it. Except Reed and Lois. So who could have given Tex the address? Of course it had to be her... Why didn't I think of that? Because you're not a detective. Well, you deserve a lot of credit, Mike. Was that all I'm going to get? Oh, no. There's something else. Something you really deserve. Uh, What's that, Angel? The check. Good night, Mr. Waring. Ever find yourself at a loss when you need a hot main dish in a hurry? Well, don't let that happen to you. Always keep a package or two of Kraft Dinner on your pantry shelf. Because with Kraft Dinner, you can make delicious macaroni and cheese in just seven minutes cooking time. Tender, fluffy macaroni with perfect cheese flavor all through it. You see, every package of Kraft Dinner gives you a special quick-cooking macaroni and just the right amount of Kraft grated to sprinkle in for wonderful cheese flavor. And Kraft Dinner can be your answer to today's high prices because every package cake makes four servings at a cost of just a few pennies each. Tomorrow, get a package or two of handy, delicious Kraft Dinner. The Case of the Worried Wife. The Case of the Worried Wife. That's the title of next week's adventure of the Falcon. When Mike Waring learns that if a playboy gets married and tries to settle down, he may find things awfully dead. So be sure to listen at the same time next week to another exciting adventure of the Falcon. Brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company. The adventures of the Falcon are based on the famous character created by Drexel Drake. Produced by Bernard L. Schubert. Written today by Eugene Wang. And directed by Richard Lewis. Music was by Arlo. Les Damon was starred as the Falcon with Ken Lynch as Sergeant Corbin. Be sure to hear The Great Gildersleeve next Wednesday evening over most of these stations. In next Wednesday's broadcast, Gildy comes face to face with an hilarious problem and solves it in a way that will keep you laughing for days. Remember the show, the time, and the place, The Great Gildersleeve next Wednesday evening over most of these stations. Check your local newspaper for time of broadcast. This is Ed Hurley. He's speaking for the Kraft Foods Company. 
Be sure to hear Rex Harrison and Lily Palmer on The Big Show on NBC. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Denny. Now, thanks for calling, but it can't be tonight, Angel. I'm on the case of a guy who jilted a girl. You'd think it would break her heart, but instead of being sad about it, it looks like she's trigger happy. <laughs> This is Ed Hurley, he friends, inviting you on behalf of the Kraft Foods Company to listen to The Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Seaman. You met the Falcon first in his best-selling novel. Then you saw him in his thrilling motion picture series. Now join him on the air when the Falcon solves... The Case of the Worried Wife. Before the Falcon solves today's case, I have a question for you. Have you tried Belvedere lately? Isn't that the finest cheese food you ever put in your mouth? That rich yet mild cheddar cheese flavor is good. Really good eating. You see, Belvedere is made by Kraft, and that's something pretty important to remember. Because you and I know the Kraft name on cheese and cheese foods means the very finest you can buy. So remember this. There's no other cheese food like Kraft pasteurized processed cheese food, Velveeta, because Kraft and only Kraft makes Velveeta. And now, the case of the worried wife. It's Sunday night in New York when pretty dark-haired Penny Layton pushes the button of an apartment overlooking East River. While she's waiting for someone to answer, Penny opens her handbag and takes out a small pistol. She closes the bag and thrusts her right hand in with the pistol into the pocket of her fur coat and gnaws nervously on her lip as she hears someone approach the door. Yes? Are you Mrs. Sheffield? Yes. I want to see your husband. <laughs> well, what's it about? Just tell him Penny wants to see him. He'll know what it's about. All right. Uh, wait here. I'll see what he says. I'll wait inside. But I don't I know. I said if I'll wait inside. All right, now you can close the door. I'll wait right here. Well, what are you waiting for? Who are you, anyway? I told you. Penny. Penny who? Ask Arnold. He'll tell you. And you can tell him I'm not leaving until I see him. Alone. All right. I'll tell him. Maybe he can explain what this is all about. Um, Arnold. Oh, yes, Liza. Who was it? Penny. Penny? Well, that's what she said. Who is she? Oh, a uh, girl I knew in Florida. I, I don't want to see her. Well, she says she won't go until you do see her. She's in the living room. Yeah, all right. Might as well get it over with. Well, you wait here. I'll get rid of her. Penny, what are you doing here? Why, Arnold, is that any way to greet me? After I followed you all the way from Miami? I wrote you. It's all over. I figured as much when I saw in the paper you got married. That's why I came up. What do you hope to gain? The one thing, I wanted to see her. She's pretty. Oh, thank you. I'd never have forgiven you if you turned me down for a horse face. Yes, yeah, she's pretty and I'm in love with her. There's nothing more for you and me, so why don't you be a good girl and just run along? Be sensible. You call it sensible to give up the man I love to somebody else? You don't love me. That's right, Arnold, I don't. But I did, so I'm not giving you up so easy. There's nothing you can do. Isn't there? You little fool, be careful. She's not going to have you, Arnold. I'm going to kill you, and then I'm going to kill myself. Don't be ridiculous. Now give me that gun. Stay back, Arnold. Don't try to get I it. I said give it to me. Let go. When you drop the gun, I... Arnold! Arnold! What happened? Well, I'm just trying to teach Penny not to play with guns. Hmm. Now, the bullet went into that chair. No great damage, son. Now, Penny, you'd better get out of here. You'll be sorry about this. I am sorry. I thought you had better sense. Now, good night. More coffee, darling? No, thanks. Arnold. Mm -hmm. I couldn't get that girl out of my mind all night. No, stop worrying about it. But suppose she comes back. She won't come back. Well, you can't be sure. Maybe we better call the police. Why, uh, I don't want to make trouble for her. Oh? 
You don't still... I mean, it's it's all over. You're sure there's nothing... Oh, for heaven's sake, darling, don't be ridiculous. She must have cared an awful lot to follow you all the way here. Yes, I suppose she did. You must have uh, done something to make her care. Will you stop worrying about it? It's all over. I hope you're right. Now, look, if there was any question about it, last night certainly settled it. You don't think I could be interested in her after that, do you? I hope not. You sure she won't come back? Yes, I'm sure. She worked herself up to a pitch. When nothing came of it, she was bound to cool off. Maybe. But I'd feel happier if you'd tell the police. Darling, will you answer one question? What? Are you afraid that if she comes back, she'll try to kill me again? Or are you afraid that this time she won't? Hello, Mara. Ringing along? Oh, hello, Sheffield. I'll join you. Okay. Hey, you're looking good. I guess marriage agrees with you. Yes, great institution. I'm all for it. But it has got its little problems. That's why I'm looking for you. Oh, looking for me? I thought this was a coincidence. No, no, I need my money. You need money? Millionaire playboy needs money? Well, you see, most of my cash is tied up, and I really went overboard on the wedding and the honeymoon. Huh? I always heard two could live as cheap as one. Try it sometime. I have enough trouble. Well, I hate to add to it, Mara, but I'm going to have to insist on my money. Well, I don't know what I can do. Things haven't been going so hot. I don't like to put the heat on you, but, well, your note's been overdue for a long time. I don't think it's too much to ask. That's right. You've got to have your champagne, your private state What kind of get... an attitude is that? Well, it's my attitude, You've see? been drinking too much. That's right. I'm just a no-good drunk. Now, look, I lent you that money in good faith. You had big ideas. It's not my fault they didn't pan out. That's right, Papa. Give me a lecture. Don't worry, pal. I will. When you're sober enough to know what I'm talking about. It'll be a long wait. It better not be. We're going to get this settled. Of course, Sheffield. We'll get it settled. For keeps. <laughs> Michael Waring, the detective called the Falcon. That's right. Well, thank heavens. I had the awfulest time finding you. Don't you have an office? No. Why not? Well, if I had an office, I'd have to have a beautiful blonde secretary. If I had a beautiful blonde secretary, I'd have trouble keeping my mind on my work. And if I didn't keep my mind on my work, I'd lose business. Then I wouldn't be able to pay the rent, so I'd lose the office. So I just saved myself the trouble. <laughs> Come in. Thank you. Your name? Liza Sheffield. What can I do for you? My husband, Arnold, spent December in Florida. You didn't go with him? But we weren't married then. In fact, we didn't even know we were going to be. Mm -hmm. But while he was there, he started going with a girl, and I guess it was pretty serious. Last night, she showed up in New York, and she tried to kill Arnold. Tried to? Well, Arnold got the gun away from her, and then he threw her out of the apartment. Well? I'm afraid she may come back. I asked my husband to notify the police, but he refused. He says he doesn't want to make any trouble for the girl. That's why I came to you. Well, what do you want me to do? Well, I thought if you could find the girl and talk to her. What do you want me to say to her? I don't know. Find out what she's planning to do. Where is she staying? I don't know. Well, what's her name? Penny. Uh, something. I, I don't know her last name. You don't know her name. You don't know where she's staying. You don't know exactly what you want me to say to her. This is the sort of case I love. Well, if it was easy, I wouldn't, I wouldn't need the falcon. Mm -hmm. I think I'd better have a talk with your husband. No. He can fill in some of the details for me. Uh, but he, he may be angry about my hiring you. I don't want him to know. Well, if you can't give me anything more to go on... I, I thought you were supposed to be such a good detective. Well, I won't argue that point. But even Sherlock Holmes wouldn't guarantee quick results with what you've given me. Well, do the best you can. What happens if Penny catches up with your husband while I'm still looking for him? She'd kill him, wouldn't she? That's right. Mm -hmm. Well, then, Angel, do I go see your husband or don't I? You win, Mr. Waring. Come on. This is Ed Hurley, he friends. Well, now, Mike won his way, all right. And you know, I'll bet you mothers would certainly like to win your way, too, when it comes to getting your family to eat those green vegetables that are so good for them. And you can. Just glamorize those vegetables a little by melting delicious Velveeta, Kraft's famous pasteurized processed cheese food, 
for a smooth golden cheese sauce to pour over them. And it's such an easy sauce to make. All you do is melt a half pound of Velveeta in the top of your double boiler. There's no need to cut it in little pieces because Velveeta melts easily and smoothly without any lumps at all. Then simply stir in a quarter cup of milk, season, and there you have a perfectly wonderful cheese sauce that'll add Velveeta's fine, rich, yet mild cheddar cheese flavor to cauliflower or spinach or broccoli. Velveeta makes them taste better than ever, and you'll be giving your family extra nourishment this way, too, because Velveeta is so rich in important food values from milk. Even the smallest youngsters can enjoy their vegetables a la Velveeta, because Velveeta is digestible as milk itself. So, Mother, make it your handy helper. Get Velveeta in the economical two-pound loaf so you'll have plenty for cold snacks and sandwiches, too. Just be sure you get genuine Velveeta. It's the pasteurized processed cheese food of top quality made only by Kraft. Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. Twenty minutes have passed. Mike and Liza Sheffield started for the Sheffield apartment to see whether Liza's husband, Arnold, would object to his wife's efforts to keep him alive. Now, as they approach the apartment, they see a sharp-faced little man standing at the door. Oh, dear. It's Mr. Ballard. Unwelcome guest? Very. Hello, Liza. No wonder you didn't answer the door. Have you been ringing? Yeah. Funny. I thought Arnold was home. Well, he ought to be here pretty soon. You can come in and wait, Mr. Waring. Right. As for you, Mr. Ballard, I can't see you now. I'm going to be busy. Oh, I'll wait. Call me tomorrow if you want to talk to me. Now, is that any way to treat an old Please. friend? Please. I haven't time. It'll only take a minute. But I don't have anything for you now. Call me in the morning. Now, look, I want to get things set. All right. Tomorrow. Now. You heard what the lady said. Tomorrow, I'll scram. Now, listen, mister. I said scram. Okay, okay. You don't have to get tough. I'm going. I'm going. What's with him? Oh, he's just somebody I used to know. Not important. Now, come on, let's go in. He's not exactly the sort of character that I would... Ah! Oh! What's the matter? Ah! Uh-oh. Is this your husband? <laughs> well, Mr. Sheffield, I'm afraid we're too late. He's dead. <laughs> I'm aside, Sergeant Corbett speaking. Hello, Bright Eyes. Uh-oh, it sounds like Mike Waring. Uh, what do you know? He's a detective. What do you want, Waring? Get a corpse for you. I'm busy. Why did you have to dig one up today? I didn't dig him up. He hasn't been buried yet. The boy's sharp. <laughs> Anything to brighten your day, Corbett? How soon can you get here? As soon as I finish my report. You're not the only one who finds bodies. Oh, you got another? Yeah, and I bet she's cuter than yours. Could be. Of course, she may not be as dead, but she made a good try. A suicide attempt? Yeah, I jumped out of the four-story window, all because some guy gave her the brush. Love, it's wonderful. <laughs> Did she leave a note? No, I talked to her. She bounced off an awning. Doc says she'll live. What's her name? Penny Layton. Why? Penny? Yeah. Hey, it could be a package deal. Let's get together. Maybe we can wrap it up. <laughs> Yes, Mrs. Sheffield. Yes. No question about it. That's the girl. Hello, Mrs. Sheffield. What's this all about, Sergeant? You, you threatened to kill her husband last night. You don't have to worry. I won't try again. Just want to die. We know you won't try again. What we want to know is, did you? What? Did you go back to Sheffield today? Of course not. Why do you ask that? Never mind. Come on, Mrs. Sheffield. Waring. She killed him. I know she did. Well, that meant she got another gun. Why didn't she shoot herself instead of jumping? Maybe she counted on the awning saving her. A four-story jump? I don't think so. But she must have killed him. Who else would have done it? How about your slimy little pal? Who? Ballard. Why, he had nothing to do with Arnold. What did he want? I tell you, it had nothing to do with this. Who is this we're talking about, Waring? Oh, a character who was very determined to see Mrs. Sheffield today. Oh. You want to tell us what he wanted, Mrs. Sheffield? It has nothing to do with the murder. Suppose you let us decide that. Was it blackmail? What? 
makes you think that? No, it certainly wasn't a friendly visit. And you said you didn't have anything for him. What would he be expecting from you? Well, it doesn't matter. I wish you'd believe that. Okay, if you won't tell me, I know somebody else who may. Who? Ballard. Liza's friend. Yeah, hello, Ballon. What do you want with me? What you wanted with Liza. Didn't she tell you? You think I came here because your company is so charming? I don't know why you came here. Who are you, anyway? Mike Waring. Oh, the Falcon? That's right. Did Liza hire you? Mm-hmm. Why? To find out a few things. Not about me. She knows about me. She doesn't know if you were coming or going when we met you at the door today. What difference does it make? Well, if you really don't know, it doesn't make any. Now, look, Waring, are you going to tell me what you want or you're going to get out of here? All right, Ballard. What did you want to see Sheffield about? I didn't want to see Sheffield. I didn't see him. Well, somebody did with a gun. Oh, oh so that's it. That's it. Well, it wasn't me. You've got to believe that. Well, maybe I do. But you strike me as the sort of character who sticks his nose into things. So if you really want to clear yourself, here's a chance to put the knot on somebody else for the honor. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, have you tried Mara? Who's Mara? Joe Mara. He borrowed a mitful from Sheffield to open a pool hall. It folded. I was thinking, what if Sheffield wanted his money and Mara couldn't pay? It's a thought. Where do I find Mara? Well, uh, you might find him at Freddy's Bar on 43rd Street. Only please don't tell him I tipped you. No, I won't breathe a word. I hope not, because if you do, I could stop breathing for keeps. <laughs> there it is in the next block. Yeah, I see it. We made pretty good time, huh? Haven't made any better time, you'd be doing time. No, I'm fast, but I'm careful. Well, don't put down your flag. If my man isn't in there, I'll be right out. Okay. But what if he is in there? Wait anyway. It may not take too long. Right. Hey, mister, look out! <laughs> mister, mister, are you all right? Yeah. When you shot it, I dropped. Yeah, those shots came from that alley. Yeah, I know. You get back. There may be more. I'll go see. Do you see anyone? No, the alley's empty. Did you get a look at who fired those shots? No, whoever it was was standing close to the building in the alley. All I saw was the hand with the gun and it come around the edge of the building and I hollered. Or could you tell if it was a man or a woman? I wouldn't know. Like I say, all I saw... Yeah, I know, a hand with a gun. And I hope whoever it was thinks he got me. I'm not anxious to have him try, try again. <laughs> to see me. What's the matter? Do you think I was lying in a gutter with a couple of slugs in me? I don't know what you're talking about. Well, I have your description. Maybe you get mine. I don't. Well, I hope not for your sake. How come you know my name? Everybody knows the Falcon. Well, I'm naturally a very modest guy, but even I can't help thinking there are a couple of people who don't know me. Well, I'm not one of them. All right. So how did you know I was looking for you? I didn't. I asked for you at Freddy's bar. They told me you left there ten minutes before I got there. So I wanted to get cleaned up, so I wanted to have dinner. That's a crime? Did someone tip you I was coming? What makes you think you'd start me rolling? I know about you and Sheffield. No? Huh? What about me and Sheffield? You're in hock to him. You got your tenses wrong, Waring. I was in hock to him. Oh, you paid him off? That's right. When? Today. Would it have been this afternoon around 3.30? It would have been this morning around 10. And you can prove you paid him? Yeah, here. Here's the receipted note. Hmm. Now, just what are you trying to prove? I don't know what I'm trying to prove, but it looks like I have proved that a certain character named Ballard is going to have to improve his singing. Looks like he's way off key. This is Ed Hurley again, friends. Well, now, maybe Mike isn't quite sure what he's trying to prove. But I'm sure of what I'm trying to prove, and what's more, I can do it with your help. All you have to do is this. Make yourself a big, hearty sandwich of your favorite kind of bread, spread with a little Kraft mayonnaise, and filled with a good, thick slice of Velveeta, Kraft's delicious pasteurized processed cheese food. Now, take a bite and see for yourself if what I'm trying to prove isn't true, that Velveeta is especially good tasting, with a fine, rich, yet mild cheddar cheese flavor. Mm hmm and Velveeta is good for you, too, because it's so rich in important food values from milk. 
These good Velveeta sandwiches are perfect for everyone, even the youngest children, any time of day, because Velveeta is digestible as milk itself. So make Velveeta your handy helper. For delicious snacks and sandwiches and for fine hot dishes, too, get genuine Velveeta, made by Kraft. <laughs> Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. It's 20 minutes since Ballard's lead led Mike no place. Now the Falcon has dropped in on Sergeant Corbett to swap information. And Corbett seems to be enjoying Mike's report of his interview with Mara. <laughs> so you went off half cock wearing, huh? All right, all right. Before you break a rib laughing, I still think it's Mara. <laughs> Where's his motive if he paid off Sheffield? I don't know. But it must have been the murderer who shot at me, and that couldn't have been either of the girls. Why not? Well, you were questioning Mrs. Sheffield. What time were you shot at, Waring? About quarter to six. I left the Sheffield woman a little after five. Oh. Well, at least it couldn't have been Magnolia Blossom. She's in the hospital. I have news for you, Waring. Well, don't tell me Penny's been released. At five. Isn't that just peachy? And then there's Ballard himself. Yeah, tell me something about Ballard. Did you learn any more about him from Mrs. Sheffield? Yeah, when you said you were going to see him, she cracked. Admitted he's been blackmailing her. I thought so. Glad I was right about something. What did he have on her? Scandal in her past. She didn't want Sheffield to know about it. Oh, the little guy likes sweat money, huh? Hey. What's the matter? The tip-off could have been to protect his pickings. What? No, we better go see Ballard. I have an idea he can give us the answers we're looking for. Yeah? Yeah. But we better hurry because we want Ballard to talk, and they say dead men don't. your motor. He's hailing a taxi. Yeah. wonder where he's going. Well, there's one way to find out. I don't want to follow too close. But... Hey! One of all the dumb drivers, did you see that guy cut out right in front of me? <laughs> to a police car, yes. <laughs> well, never mind him. The taxi just turned to the next corner. We better get going. Yeah. Hey, the guy who cut in front of you is turning at the corner, too. Is he following Ballard, too? Could be. Makes a nice parade, huh? Look behind us, Waring. Well, what for? I just wonder if anybody's following us. They're already in the elevator. Hope we haven't lost them. Well, they came into this building. Where would they be going? Stepped up to see Mrs. Sheffield. But that was Mara following Ballard. I recognized him when he got out of the car. So what? Look at the elevator indicator. Basement. Yeah. That's not Sheffield's unless she's moved since this afternoon. Push the button. Right. wonder what they're doing down there. Well, it's not a maypole dance. You can bet on that. All right. They're slugging it out. Why? Mara wants to find out what Ballard knows. Here we are. Get in. Okay. But I still don't see how you figure it, Waring. Ballard knows about Mrs. Sheffield's past, but what's that got to do with Mara? Nothing. Ah, it gets clearer all the time. But we haven't time to discuss it now. Here we are. There they are. Yeah, come on. All right, Mara, that's enough. Let him go. Where did you drop that gun? Then we'll talk. Go on, drop it. Do you want to see if I'm only kidding with this one? Okay. There you are. Pick it up, Waring. Now, what's going on here? He was trying to kill me. Guy's lying. I was trying to make him talk. About what? Well, the papers say Sheffield was murdered. Waring was asking me about it. Ballard must have figured me, and I wanted to know why. He put a gun on my back. He made me come down here in the basement. We know that, Ballard. And there are a couple of other things we know. That you were blackmailing Mrs. Sheffield, for instance. You can't prove that. Well, you forget that now that Sheffield's dead, she's willing to talk. And we can certainly prove you were at the apartment today around the time of the murder, because I saw you. I was there after the murder. Maybe. Anyway, you better go along with Sergeant Corbin. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I didn't kill Sheffield. I didn't say you did. But you know who did, and when you talk... Uh, uh, come on, Mara. Come no, back here. No, I said come back no. here. You're not going anywhere except with Corbett, too. Because, Mara, you're the murderer. I'm well, sorry to spoil a little joke, Corbett. It was Mara, after all. Doesn't your arm ever get tired wearing? So what? Patting yourself on the back. 
Well, I'd just like to give credit where credit is due. You weren't so sure it was Mary yourself when you saw that receipt. Well, I admit it threw me for a while, but I bounced back. Mm. It's cute of Mara. Sheffield wants his money, so Mara scrapes it up and gives it to him. Gets a receipt for it, then plugs Sheffield and takes back the money. Uh-huh. He figured it was safe enough because he'd read in the paper about the Leighton girl threatening Sheffield. And he counted on her taking the rap. He might have gotten away with it, too, if Ballard hadn't cleared the deal. Yeah, in fact, I still don't think you solved this one, Waring. We were simply lucky that by following Ballard, we happened to stumble on Mara. Well, that's what I was counting on. Yeah. Yeah, sweetheart. See, I knew that Ballard had tipped off the person who shot at me. How did you know that? Because the person was waiting for me at Freddy's bar. That meant he had to know where I'd be going. And Ballard was the only one who knew. Couldn't it have been Ballard himself who was waiting? No, because I went straight to Freddy's from Ballard. And my driver drove fast. Ballard could never have beaten me there. All right, it wasn't Ballard. No, but it was somebody who had been tipped off by Ballard. At first, I thought it was somebody working with him, but when you confirmed my suspicions about him being a blackmailer, I changed my idea. You figured Ballard was following a pattern and blackmailing again. Yeah, that's right. He was on the scene at the time of the murder. It was perfectly possible for him to have seen the murderer leave the apartment. So I figured it was blackmail, and he tipped the murderer that I knew too much so the murderer could get rid of me. He didn't want me nabbing the killer and spoiling his chance for blackmail. But Ballard's the one who put you on to Mara in the first place. I know, I know. He could rattle when I was accusing him and try to get out from under. But after I left, he couldn't see that nice opportunity for blackmail going out the window. I see. Well, that's all there is to it. Once I realized Ballard was up to the old game of blackmail, I knew all we had to do was follow him. And sooner or later, we'd cross paths with the murderer. Yeah, Waring, it all adds up. Except couldn't Mara have been telling the truth when he said all he was trying to do was find out why Ballard sicked you on him? How did he know Ballard was the one who steered me to him? No, Corbett. A Mara named Ballard, he put his head in the noose. You've got the wrong metaphor, Waring. In this state, it's not the noose, it's the electric chair. Well, in that case, hang around for Good night, Corbett. <laughs> This is Mike Waring, friends. Our Falcon programs bring you stories of the detection and prevention of crime. And right now, I'd like to say another word or two about preventing crime. You can help, you know. You needn't give money. Just give your sincere support to the Boys Clubs of America. These clubs build good citizens with strong, healthy bodies and minds. Boys who are completely honest, who respect property and individual rights, and who realize that America is a land of opportunity if you're willing to learn and work and try hard. These non-sectarian, non-profit boys' clubs are operated by groups of public-spirited adults so that boys from 8 to 20 can enjoy the right kind of recreation and companionship in their own clubhouses. If you and your neighbors would like to establish a boys' club in your community, get in touch with the Boys' Clubs of America for help. Think about it, won't you? Thanks a lot. The Case of the Carved Ham. The Case of the Carved Ham. That's the title of next week's Adventure of the Falcon. When Mike Waring learns sometimes a gun can change a great comedian into a bad actor. So be sure to listen at the same time next week to another exciting Adventure of the Falcon brought to you by the Kraft Food Company. The Adventures of the Falcon are based on the famous character created by Drexel Drake, produced by Bernard L. Schubert, Written today by Jerome Epstein and directed by Richard Lewis. Music was by Arlo. Les Damon was starred as the Falcon with Ken Lynch as Sergeant Corbett. Be sure to hear the great Gildersleeve next Wednesday evening over most of these stations. In next Wednesday's broadcast, Gildy comes face to face with a hilarious problem and solves it in a way that will keep you laughing for days. Remember the show, the time, and the place. The Great Gildersleeve, next Wednesday evening, over most of these stations. Check your local newspaper for time of broadcast. This is Ed Hurley. He's speaking for the Kraft Foods Company. Tonight, Theater Guild presents the exciting Fallen Idol on NBC. Mm-hmm.